Hey everybody, welcome back. I know this has been rather sporadic, but I have to redo my phone every time I do this, so this is really kind of hard. Also, I had just did a video about Penzik versus Gulf Wars, which this is a remake of, because apparently I talked for close to half an hour and the phone crashed, saying, no, too much memory. Ah, so I erased some more stuff and I'm going to try again. And not going to go for a half hour video. As hopefully some of you know, I was asked by Scholastica if I could do a comparison between Penzik and other SCA wars, with the problem being I had not been to any other SCA wars. Well, this past year now, I've now gone to Gulf Wars. And uh, I think it's going to help with the videos because it's been a long time since I've been a noob at anything in the SCA. So being a new person at Gulf Wars gave me that, ooh, wow, kind of thing that I can give you ideas for Penzik for your next Penzik. I made a bunch of notes that gave me a half hour video. Not worth it. How does Penzik compare to Gulf Wars or Gulf Wars compared to Penzik? First is obviously the size. The size, Penzik is immense compared to Gulf Wars. Gulf Wars is very interesting because it is formed in three loops, basically. And the center is an area called five points where everything sort of radiates out of. At Penzik, the closest you can come to that would be, say, the Cooper store and the merchant area around the Cooper store. Granted, anyone who lives on the Serengeti or the B-Blocks who does not want to buy ice could never get to that point or use a shower house or anything like that. They may not come to that side of the war, but almost everybody will pass by the Cooper store sooner or later at Penzik. So that would be the closest comparison to the five points at Gulf Wars. Also, Gulf Wars is flat. Um, it's down in Mississippi. It's flat. Um, every place in Penzik, there's hills everywhere. So, um, Penzik is bigger with hills. So you can get your workout walking. There are golf carts to get around at Gulf Wars. There are buses at Penzik. So if you're not up to walking a lot, you can have some public transportation type things set up. Uh, you will have to check your timing and stuff like that. You know, when your classes are, when you can get the bus, you know, are you going partying? When do they stop doing the bus or the golf cart? Um, but otherwise, you can get around. The archery range is a lot closer. Well, that's because Gulf Wars is a lot smaller. Um, the archery range is also smaller, but there are fewer archers. So... It works out okay. The war point was a 60-yard shoot, so not the 100-yard clout that you get at Penzik. But as I couldn't hit the 60-yard this year, yeah, I'm sorry. I tried. Uh, but <laughs> I should be able to hit it, but... You know, new arrows, new string. Nah, not a good combination. So, it was... Pretty cool. Uh, Throne Weapons is at the same location as Archery at Gulf Wars. At Penzik, it is just off the battlefield, so it's closer. Um, merchants. Surprisingly good merchants. My new Tigger Tugs long doublet thing here. Um, very good merchant selection at Gulf Wars. Um, I think per capita... Gulf Wars might be on par with Penzik. Um, maybe better. There are a lot of merchants there and pretty good selections. So I, I was happy. You know, I was happy with that. Um, there are obviously more merchants at Penzik, but per person, Gulf Wars is a smaller event. To have that many merchants is pretty cool. Um, the number of people who are at Gulf Wars who are Skadian, the percentage is much higher. 
um, Penzik has entire households of people who are either fringe groups, you know, the Kingdom of Acre, the Two Chucks, Marklin, things like that, um, various LARP organizations and things like that, who will show up for Penzik, don't show up for Gulf Wars. This means that there's a lot... Me and a friend of mine were sitting at the Green Dragon Inn going, you know, there's a lot of tin hats here and regalia and stuff. And it's because it's really just an SEA event. Um, that was pretty cool, or at least different. Um, it kind of became obvious when looking for the nightlife because... At Penzig, there are people who just show up for an entire camp of parties, whereas here it was, we got to get to the field in the morning. So, you know, that's why I spent most of my time at the Green Dragon Inn, because it was close, because nothing's that far at Gulf Wars, and I really didn't find anything else to do at night. The Pardic thing, the party thing, there was one party at Trimeris, and that's all I saw. I, I know there was more, but I was a noob, couldn't find it. Um, the fighting and fencing and stuff is the field was reasonably good. They have a castle and they have a ravine battle. The East Kingdom for fencing ripped things up pretty good. Um, and the East Kingdom fencing unit was given the Order of the Blue Tiger Legion, which is only given out once a year, so... That was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so the differences are... Oh, and Penzig doesn't have fire ants. Yeah. Um, weather, we had rain, we had cold, we had heat. Sounds like Penzig. Yeah. I realistically think that we have, um, as modern people, less tolerance for weather than we let on. And when we spend a week or more living outside, it becomes more apparent to us that we are going through this experience. So whereas, you know, oh, it's a little chilly or it's a little rainy or it's a little hot or a little humid in a world where we're going to be in central air conditioning or central heating or climate controlled places where it's always bright lights or dark, no twilight, no rain, no once you're living in a tent, that becomes very obvious that, oh, man, it was cold last night and it's hot now and it's raining now. And those things add up. And I don't think it's the event. I think it's our perception of the event more than it is. Yes, I've heard of Gulf NATO. I have friends who went to Gulf NATO and I was at Penzik 23. There are exceptions. There are times when the weather really is that bad. But a lot of it, I think, is our perception. Um, if you have been to Gulf Wars and have not been to Penzik, what you can look forward to, a lot more walking. Um, hills. Um, better food. Honestly, the food court at Penzik is better than the food court at Gulf Wars. The bakery at Gulf Wars was really good. It's a passion project by some Skadians. But outside of that, the locals seem to appreciate the food court there. But especially since I had spent a day and a half in New Orleans where everyone's trying to feed you and the food is amazing to then get to a campground where the portions were not that big and the food was meh, you know, was kind of disappointing compared to like Center City Barbecue in New Orleans or something like that. Which, by the way, if you're in New Orleans, hit that place up. I'm not sponsored, but. It was a pretty damn good. Um, so I hope this gives you an idea of what you can expect if you go down to Gulf Wars. It was a lot of fun. I recommend it. It was a 24-hour drive for me going down and a 30-something hour drive on the way home because the trip home is always longer. And, uh, you know, hopefully see you at war. Next couple of videos will be about tents, about neurodivergency at Penzik and a couple other things. I don't know what, because I don't have those notes in front of me. See you at war. If you've made it this far, here's your internet cat photo. Thank you very much. If you could leave a comment, like, and subscribe to this channel, 
that would be great. I'm not monetized, but it really does help at least the ego. Thank you very much and see you at war.